All right, good afternoon. What's poppin'? Thursday afternoon business. You know how we do. Queens, New York City, where we're known to get busy, hot and humid, summer. That's how it is. But always, we got to conduct business. Gentlemen, come on and wipe your feet on the rug. Throw some smoke in the atmosphere. Chilling with a little bit of white gorilla. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking for more flavors. But I did pick up some sherbet and some... Uh, you know what? I got to ask you guys. Uh, I picked up some Flodro Hybrid. Okay, this is from Seattle. If anybody knows about Flodro Hybrid, it looks amazing. I haven't even cracked it open yet. Uh, but it does look amazing. Anyway, uh, you know how we get down. We're going back to the New York Mafia.com for another mop spotlight. And uh, I got a little construction going on in the background, so you know it is what it is. Again, of course, we're going to Lisa Babic site, a.k.a. MS, the New York Mafia.com. Check it out. I love the banner. Salute to Vic Vega. And again, Lisa, thank you for everything you do. Thank you for your articles, for allowing us to read them. Thank you for your donations. So let's get right into it. Today's Mob Spotlight uh, is going to be on Paolo Gambino, Don Paulino. Paolo Paul Gambino, a.k.a. Don Paolo, was born in 1904 in Palermo, Sicily. He is one of the four Gambino brothers and kid brother of mob boss Carlo. Nino and Joseph were the others. He was also a cousin to Castellano, Masato, and Guglielmini families, all mob connected. He resided at 1219 East 12th Street in Brooklyn. Paolo and Carlo married two sisters who were also their cousins, surnamed Castellano. During the Castello Marisi War, a gunman shot at and attempted to kill Paul, mistaking him for his brother, Carlo. Although they missed their target, the incident was enough for Carlo. Paul and their Palermo contingent to swing their support over to Maranzano, a pivotal event helping to turn the tide of the war to Maranzano's favor. By the 1940s, he was identified as a major figure in the Mangiano family in the New York area and was identified as a member by Joe Valachi at this class during the televised U.S. Senate hearings of 1963. Gambino was listed by the FBI as one of the top capo di decina of the family, especially during his brother's Carlo's reign as boss from 1957 forward. His activities included liquor, alcohol, bootlegging, black market rackets, stolen and counterfeiting gas ration stamps during World War II, counterfeiting U.S. currency, alien and heroin smuggling and wholesale distribution, gambling, extortion, among other rackets. Gambino's longtime close business and family associate included Francesco Don Cicci Scalici, Giuseppe Joe Scalici, Giacomo Scalici, Benjamin Castellano, Constantino Paul Castellano, Rosario Saul Mazasalma, Thomas Massaro, Peter Castellana, Antonio Nino Conte, Pasquale Conte, Collegero Lelio Di Carlo, Guglielmini, Frank Guglielmini, Giacomo Jack Scarpula, Angelo Scarpula, Ugo Rossi, and Joseph Joe Bandi Biondo. Many of the above named mafiosi were his relatives. Gambino had at least eight arrests since 1929 for suspicion of committing a felony, alcohol bootlegging several times, federal alcohol tax violations, reckless driving, multiple traffic law violations, and possession of stolen property. In 1937, he was indicted for operating a huge liquor bootlegging ring for two years with his brother Carlo. He was one of 17 defendants. They smuggled cased liquor and supplied sugar and other key staples for operating alcohol stills. The Gambino brothers were said to have become millionaires through their alcohol bootleg racket. Paul eventually went on the lam to Italy for almost a year before turning himself to a, turning himself into authorities. He later served a two-year prison term. In the 1940s, he operated a black market of stolen and counterfeit ration stamps racket. This was where he and Carlo were alleged to have made their second fortune. Many were in the racket, but according to Valachi and others, the Gambino brothers were among the biggest operators in the racket, along with Sam McCarty. This ration stamp racketeering went on during all the war years. So the sustained level at which they dealt, coupled with the duration of the ring, ensured that they made a financial killing. Side note, although gasoline coupons were key, 
meats, milk, other foods, nylons, dry goods, rubber, among other provisions desired by the public, ensured their continued success. Paul Gambino was known to have visited Lucky Luciano in Italy during the 1940s and 50s, and he was top advisor to Carlo. In 1963, he was arrested for eluding detectives in Brooklyn after spotting them tailing him. He was charged with multiple traffic law violations for running stoplights and signs, speeding, illegal turns and maneuvers. Paolo had owned over the years with and without his brother Carlo as partners several major businesses numbered among which were Blue Star Meat Markets, based on Main Street in Flushing, Queens, salute, and owned several retail store locations in this Queens area. Queens, business. Side note, in 1967, a truckload of 1,048 cases of hijacked Polish hams valued at 35000 was found at this market. He and his partner in the Blue Star Market, John Lopinto, were also identified by the FBI in the 1963 Senate hearings as a captain in the Gambino family, was charged with criminally receiving stolen goods. In 1967, Paul Diarpa was himself arrested for harboring and concealing a fugitive, namely his father-in-law, Paul, from arrest on possession of the stolen hams. Paul had been hiding out at his daughter and son-in-law's Brooklyn home. Also, they owned Ferro Foods, Incorporated of Brooklyn, ostensibly owned by his son-in-law, Frank Ferro, and son, or nephew, Frank Gambino. This was a large-volume wholesale Italian food supplier to pizzerias and restaurants in the New York, New Jersey area for many years. Mozzarella, tomato products, flour, pizza boxes, etc. Ferro figured into several bankruptcy frauds and larcenies over the years of various wholesale cheese distributors, etc. They also owned Butcher Tools Company in Brooklyn, a firm created by Gambino, Salvatore Guglielmini, and Frank Farrow in 1959, which within months had infiltrated and came to dominate the trade, taking over hundreds of sharpening accounts the trade group had for decades with Dilbert Supermarkets, Trons Markets, meat wholesalers, and other large chain food stores and butcher shops. This firm supplied meat butchers, supermarkets, and food stores with a knife-sharpening service. Side note, this firm was eventually bought out in 1962 by the Butcher's Trade Group, the New York Grinders Association, a 170-member group, for $177,000 to rid themselves of this mob competition. A company created for approximately 5000 was sold by Gambino for 177000 months later. The transaction became the focus of a major criminal investigation and U.S. Senate testimony into business infiltration by the mob. In 1965, Gambino, Guglielmini, and Ferro were subpoenaed to testify before the SCI, State Investigation Commission, on underworld infiltration of legitimate business. He repeatedly took the Fifth Amendment to over 30 questions about Butcher Tools Company, Blue Star, and several other firms he operated. After the purchase, the Butcher's Association auctioned off the assets of the firm, including ragtag vehicles, old broken rusty knives, and other equipment which was bought less than $1,000 at auction. By the early 1970s, Paolo was keeping a low profile. He is listed at dying in 1973, all right, so salute, first of all, again, Lisa, the New York Mafia.com. and also check out www.italianinquisition.com, right? So salute to you, thank you for allowing us to read the story, salute to MS, which is Lisa, salute to the other guy, uh, another mob spotlight, this is your boy Big Rich, Queens, New York City, where we absolutely get busy, like, comment, and share. And don't forget to let me know what you're smoking on. We will talk soon. Salute.